Do you know what will happen where you can get news about the Jamaican culture and just learn about how Jamaicans are doing as a first yard and abroad? You get to learn a new Jamaican part of word or even a Jamaican phrase. I look forward to the Patwa word of the day. The Patwa word is Pasa Pasa. Word of today is Taco Ram. Our word of the day is Duffy. Twang. Not like a, not like a twang. Not true. I enjoy tuning in to what a good. It happens every Friday at 7 p.m. So check them out. And bye from Toronto. Yeah, Dodge, Quebec, it's La Jamaica. Écoute, what a guan. Yes, I, what a guan. I am a big fan of what a guan. Relevant and entertaining, so keep up the good work. Watch what a guan. Big up yourself, what a guan. What a guan. Yes, I, what a guan. Watch what a guan. Always say I'm going to walk one in a yard. Check it out. 7 p.m. every Friday. Well, 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 welcome, massive yard and abroad. What a goan is now on, and as usual on a Friday, we know what that means. It's time for us to send out the text, make the call, because we need the friend, the neighbor, and the enemy to come true, because what a goan start. And it's a girl from Bunga Town, your regular host for 2023. Remember, Bunga Town is the town within the town within the town, right? So your girl from Bunga Town is back for another Friday and ready to keep you entertained and going. And I'm asking you all to do the same. Keep me entertained by dropping some comments down below there, right down below on your phone or your computer, whatever you're watching, what I'm going from. Comment, keep the thing lively. So as you know, I am Nicole, a.k.a. your girl from Bungaton, and I am a guest here in Mukinsis or Calgary, which is the known name. And I work with the Women's Center of Calgary here in Calgary, Alberta. And I am working now as the Community Engagement Coordinator. So that involves a lot of internal and external engagement with organizations and people so that's my day job and on Fridays I'm your host all right last week don't be try to choke me because I must never have my water so this week will come with me water will me bless so no don't be now go choke me this week so no coughing right fingers crossed we want to welcome our um our viewers from who is listening to us on Fresh FM radio in London and remember that What A Guan also streams on all podcasting platforms. That includes Podbeam, Google, Amazon, iHeart, Player FM, and other major plat <coughs> Sorry, podcasting platforms. <clears throat> if you want to connect with us, there's a link on our website, and you can find that website at www.whataguan.ca. Always remember that Guan is two A's, all right? Um, it's still April. This is the last Friday in April. And for this month, we were focusing on social issues. So today being the last episode, we are still going to be looking at social issues um, in Jamaica. And today it's going to be around Jamaican education system with input from those who have directly contributed, a.k.a. our fabulous teachers um we want to look at what are some of the good parts what are some of the bad parts what are the different parts that needs our attention our members of our communities are aware of how they impact the system what should we expect from the system so stay tuned because that is going to come up later in a time to reason all right so if you missed last week episode of the show i want you to Check us out on Facebook and YouTube. That's where you will see the episodes 
that you missed. So another favorite part of the Wataguan for me is Patwa time. So this is where we share a phrase or a word from none other than no jam dung. Yeah, if you say it, you get it right. And today's word is do. When you hear someone say do or do, may I beg you, give me a little water there. May I beg you, can I sit near a jam shop for me? Do. So it can come either in the middle of the sentence or at the end. So when somebody said do, do me a beg or carry the soap me a for me do. What does it mean? So again, just a little reminder, we want to keep the thing going, flowing and interactive. So drop what this means in the comment and also use it in a sentence. And if you want to make it even spicy, tell me what parts of speech is do. All right. So that's our part of our word for today. If you, I said this earlier, if you missed last week's show, we spoke with Joseph Edwards. He's a former policeman, author, and social commentator, and he shared some interesting views about the informer culture, the snitches, the snitches get stitches culture. He stressed that for too long, our people have missed the direct effect of being quiet while wrong things happen around us. The cost of being quiet in fear of being labeled an informer becomes a cost borne by our health system and our penal system. And this le leads to the starvation of other areas and resources that we need. There were many nuggets that we took away and I hope you took away some too. And we hope that, you know, if you missed it that and you want to hear again or you want to share just go to our YouTube or our Facebook and you can share it. I'm also encouraging you to follow us on these platforms if you haven't yet done so and share it among your network. So we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, we're on YouTube, our YouTube, LinkedIn, and we have a website. So check us out on any of those five places. Follow, like, subscribe, and share. So just a little thing just so this time now we're heading to the new section so to share some things that is happening here in Canada so in Calgary my place the arts common and reggae fest present Luciano the messenger and he's coming to Calgary on May 18 at the Jack Singer concert hall get your tickets now at www.artscommons.ca go and see the messenger the third edition of the Calgary Black Film Festival is happening May 26 to 29th. Many great productions for seasoned and up-and-coming filmmakers. The festival will be both in-person and online. Go to calgaryblackfilm.com to see the lineup and also to get tickets. In the East Coast, in Toronto, we hope you've already signed up for the 41st annual Walk Good Walkathon, hosted by the Jamaican Canadian Association, Ontario. The event is scheduled for Sunday, May 7th. It is both an in person and virtual event. To sign up and to get more information, go to www.jcaontario.org. Join them, stay healthy, and walk good. Now, a little bit of news from Dangai Yard. Work is currently underway to erect the Usain Bolt statue. The statue of the truck icon Usain Bolt is finally off the ground in Falmouth, Trelawney. As the base for the structure is now being constructed, constructed by soldiers from the Jamaica Defense Force. Plans for the sculpture in Water Square were first announced in 2019 by Sports Minister, Minister Olivia Grange. At the last monthly meeting of the Trelawney Municipal Corporation, TMC, which was held last Thursday, Wayne Palmer, Chief Executive Officer of the Municipal Body, said that the frequently postponed project was now being executed. Work should be completed in four months. 
The Center for Intellectual Excellence presents the World Diversity in Leadership Conference 2023 from June 20th to 23 at the NISCO Conference Center near Edmonton, Alberta. Here speakers including Margaret Trudeau, Minjat Minhas, and Dr. Denise Green, and many great panelists focus on the themes of climate change and mental health. To register and get more information, go to www.wodil.ca or call 780-229-0759. So the show is moving on, and we are now at my other favorite part, time for all a liquor reason, with none other than the big man himself, Donovan Simon. So hold a liquor chill, grab some tea, because guess what? It's now time for all a reason. Thanks for taking the chat. All right. Uh, yeah, What's up, Ms. Nicole? I'm here, sir. I'm <laughs> here and looking forward to the reasoning because you, you, you killed the doppy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me pray over my water this week, man. Put him oh. in a corner. Uh, well, I'm not sure how you did that. So that, that that is something that maybe we'll discuss at another time how you put yes. that up in a corner. Uh, or maybe only people from Bongotown can do that. <laughs> Me would be surprised, but don't worry. Him in a corner. You put him in a corner. Yes. All right. All right. Well, we're not going to be in a corner today. Today we're going to talk about education as we continue to talk about social issues and we have some have some serious reason for going with some great guests. So yes, man. find out the reasoning and then we'll touch base later. Yeah, man. All right. Have a good reason. All right. Uh, greetings again, folks. Welcome to our time to reason here on what I go on. And today we're going to talk about education, the education system in Jamaica. We're going to look at the pros and the cons. And we've got Joy Miller Guthrie and Javon Stewart joining us to have that discussion. Joy has been a teacher for many, many, many years. Uh, she taught in Jamaica. She's taught in, in New York. She has been an education director. She has done a number of things over, over many years. Uh, Javon has a little over 10 years in teaching as well. He's a teacher at Meadowbrook High and also an adjunct uh, lecturer in accounting at the Excelsior Community College. Both bring us a ton of experience, and it's my pleasure to invite them to join us here on a time to a reason. Let's bring them on. Hey, Joy. Hey, Javon. Hey. Oh, hi. Good evening, everybody. Hi, Simon. Thank you for giving me the platform. All right. I could get a whole light. Yeah. No, but maybe, maybe you should say it in part of like said, do. Do, yeah. Do, or do. Time to make it a big audience in my very opinionated self. So, yeah. What a go on, pan what a go on, as they say, Jamaica. All right, well, there we go. What a go on, pan what a go on. All right, listen, enough things are going on. And today we're going to talk about the education system and the pros and cons. And both of you have been in the system. Uh, maybe where we should start the conversation, and this is open to, to both of you, is what do we think the, the perspective of the Jamaican people in particular is? as it relates to the education system. What, what do you think they think of it? Uh, Joy, let's start with you. Okay. Um, I am a little bit from the old school, probably. I have a few years on Javon. <laughs> and um, when I was a child, I grew up in the inner city community of Waterhouse, right? 
from parents who came from country, very, very humble and poor stock. And at that time when I was a child, the, um, the perspective of most Jamaicans or the average Jamaican was education was the means of climbing the social ladder. Mm -hmm. um, our parents probably weren't educated beyond. I think what I'm calling third, third, um, third, some third something, third grade. It wasn't third grade. It was third okay. something. Second very, grade. very old, right? Yeah. And um, I think they saw in, in us, their children, the means of becoming somebody. Mm -hmm. So they placed a, a, a lot of stock on education. They wanted one of their children to go to college, to be, to talk good and be, you know, smarty, right? Mm -hmm. And um, for, for many years, I think that was how most Jamaicans saw their future and um, kind of achieving some kind of posterity. But I've, in my opinion, somehow that, that whole perspective got shifted and this is by no means a study, but just my observation that somewhere in the 1980s, we started seeing a shift in how education was viewed mm -hmm. because um, people recognized that they could go into business as informal, I don't want to put no, you know, yeah. commercial stigma on anybody, but the informal commercial importers were like, the um, epitome of succeeding without education. Mm -hmm. And they were seen as very prosperous. And this was reflected in the attitudes of probably their children or people observing that, hold on, I don't have about a waste of time studying a book and going to college. And that was a long process. Mm -hmm. And this was like a shortcut to being somebody, to being yeah. smarty. I think it was um, Rex Nettleford used to call it smartification. Yeah. yeah. So you could have smodify now without going through um five years of high school or seven years probably if you went to sixth form and then you had to do another at least four years in college. And those of us those of us who weren't very bright who got pushed to the side and you had to go do dressmaking and carpentering and whatever. Mm -hmm. So now they were equal with the intellectuals. So um Yes, the long answer to a, a very um, short question was, yes, the perspective has shifted over the years. Yeah. Let's bring Javon in. Javon, what, what do you think? Uh, and I, I, I do agree with Joy for the most part. Uh, there is some amount of a shift in the perspective of Jamaicans and their view on education. But I don't think it is significant to the extent where in Jamaicans do not value education. I think that there is a general interest by our Jamaican populace to have an education, to be able to uh, climb the social ladders of, of, of society and to make an impact, mm -hmm. right? So we see even where the, the community helps to uh, shape the, the whole viewpoint or the whole necessity of getting an education mm -hmm. wherein persons are encouraged either through um, word of mouth, a pat on the back, or even financially by offering them scholarships or internships yeah, mm -hmm. so that they can further their education. So there is a, a great push in our society, I would say, for education to be the primary means by which we take our nation forward. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to challenge you on, on whether it's primary by asking, is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it producing the product that the community and the economy needs, the skills and the attitudes to take Jamaica where we want to go? Uh, to an extent. I don't uh, think that we are there yet as a nation. Uh, I think that as a people, we have much, much more to do uh, because there are certain 
skill sets that are, are needed by our respective communities. And I don't think the, the education system is adequate enough because of the limitations which exist, whether it be through funding or through um, ICT, which is able to capture whatever is required in our society. So let us take, for example, um, we see now there is a push towards uh, STEM subjects. There's a push towards having persons uh, qualified in basic skills such as uh, uh, nursing or sewing or, or other areas of healthcare. That push is there now. But mm -hmm. it, it it isn't sufficient to take care of the current needs which exist. There needs to be much more. Uh, Joy, Joy, what are some of the gaps? What what do you see? Is it is it delivering? Um, say that. Ask the question again, Donovan. Is, is the is the education system delivering the the output that is needed? I don't think so. Okay, Where, where's the gap? And I'm gonna say I'm gonna say that from the perspective of a primary school teacher in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let me just use one example. I, I was asked to look at a paper, right? Of a young lady who did very well in primary school. She went to one of the elite high schools, Immaculate. She was in college. And um, she was doing her bachelor's degree and she asked me to look over. And then when I looked over the paper, I was horrified. I said, hold on. What happened between primary school and now? What's good? What kind of paper is this? And this is not the, that was not the level of education I expected from an immaculate graduate, right? The people I knew when I um, entered the people I rub shoulders with at St. Hughes, I went to St. Hughes from 75 to 80. That, that could never pass muster. Um, when, when I was in high school, if you achieved nine subjects, 10 subjects, you were extremely bright. That was mm -hmm. when we were doing GC O level. Then they changed to CXC. And the, the design of the exam was different, which I embraced it wholly. But somewhere, something I think went wrong. And I think the system that um, CX, I think it's called CSEC now, back then it was. It CXC. is. Mm -hmm. Right. There is a component which I think is necessary because, you know, exams are like a one shot deal. Right. That day you don't feel good. You're nervous. Your head hurt your belly. I hurt you. You feel your exam. You have to go do a reset. Right. Mm -hmm. They, um, this, it, what is it called again? The project based part of it? C School based assessment. SBA, yeah. SBA yeah. allows, um, well, I think the intent is good, where you're supposed to get a broader image of what the, the student has learned throughout the years. But what I know for a fact is happening is that there are people doing these children, these students' SBAs for them. And if I were to go in a court of law, could I find at least one person I know who is paid to she she accepts money to, to do students SBA. So the final grade is not necessarily reflective of what the student has learned. Right? Yeah. So um I think the system is failing. But is that a system failure though, or is that a societal failure? And we're going to come to that in a little bit, right? Uh because community influences what the education system uh, produces to a certain extent, doesn't it? Uh, Javon, you're in the Absolutely. classroom every day, right? Is, is, isn't community influencing what the system is, is producing? Yes, it is. And if you look at it this way, the society is essentially a, a microcosm of, of the entire system, right? Mm -hmm. And so, of course, however, it is that the society um, impacts these individuals is exactly what you're going to see in the system. And so 
the, the, the community plays a very strong role in how education is achieved within the society. Uh, I, I want to bring our attention. I, I saw this quote recently, and I'm going to throw it up on the screen. Uh, this, this was from the Jamaican Prime Minister at uh, Caribbean Round Team about crime and violence. And a part of what he said was that our education system must be reimagined to promote values and skills needed to develop a, to develop a pro-social, growth-oriented, creative and productive or productive citizens. Uh, I, I saw that and I thought it was interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, is that, can I jump, that, can that, I jump in here? Is that a mentality in the education system? You know what? Um, Not at the moment. As, as, as an educator who has um, experienced the system both in Jamaica and in the U.S., educators know what needs to be done. There are countless studies, but... The, in my mind, the problem is that educators don't necessarily influence policy. That's right. Politicians do. Um, persons who have a stake, something to gain, the people who create testing systems, who publish books, these are the people who are the greater influencers. Today, I went to a, an early childhood conference. And, you know, it was a shame that every time we go to these conferences and these think tanks and these roundtable talks, it's the same, basically the same sentiment is echoed. A few years ago, I, I was in a lecture and um, the point was made that Amer the American education system is failing. America was scoring like 25 in, I think it was mathematics. America has, a, has an education system that is largely failing. And it's not because the educators don't know what needs to be done. The, the mm -hmm. prime minister is absolutely right. There was a time when civics was a big part of the Jamaican education system. They took it out. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure it wasn't educators who recommended that. It must have been policymakers who felt it was outdated and that was one of the biggest mistakes that they made. We lost the value part of our education system. And then they were now just focusing on academics, cognitive, the cognitive part of it, the academic part of the education, and we lost the values. But And, and I um, notice you, you asked the question, is it a societal problem mm -hmm. or is it a problem of the education system? I think we're basically talking about chicken and eggs. Which one comes first? Yes, yeah, the education it, system it, is America because of done. the society, but it's the education system that produces the citizens who make up the society. So or, where, or, where, or where maybe, does it go wrong? Or maybe not producing the outcomes that we're looking for, right, Javon? You were saying earlier that mm -hmm. you know you were you were saying yeah, some of this is true, but but when you walk into the classroom. Uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, is that the product that, that you, you are seeing? Is that what the Prime Minister is saying it should be? How, how does that happen? No, uh, that's not what we're seeing. You see, as teachers, I think there is a disconnect between what is taking place, what should take place in the classroom, and what the, the policymakers uh, expect of us. And because there is that disconnect, the, the kind of products that we have as Jamaican students uh, and, and people is not what it should be. Because majority of the times as teachers, we spend our time being parents, friends, counselors, uh, you name it, right, mm -hmm. to these persons as opposed to helping them to garner the skills and the, the, the values that they need to go forward to become that ideal or model uh, citizen that the, the, the Prime Minister makes reference to. Yeah. And so the, the time that we take to do that could have otherwise been spent to, to create the but ideal you, citizen. But Javon, let me ask you something here, and that's very interesting that you said that. You cannot educate a hungry child. True. You cannot educate a child who has been through trauma. 
True. whether within their community or within the home space. So there's no point in trying to instill these skills or to teach this skill set or hoping the child will will um suck up the educate the concepts that you're trying to teach like a sponge. When this child is not in the emotional mindset to be able to accept what you are giving. And I, and I agree with you. The, the, the emotional state will most oftentimes take precedence to what needs to be done academically. And because that is true, the issue that I have is that there isn't enough time to, to strike a balance to achieve both academic and, and emotional needs. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So the, the, the points being made are very, very valid, but I'm also thinking that they're not novel. We have had hungry kids for years. We have had barefoot kids. We have had uh, kids that have, you know, inherited trauma and, and seen trauma. And, and the question then is, 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 is that expectation of what the education system should deliver a fair one. Can can it truly deliver what 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 we need? It's based, not based delivering on, because it's not based being on given the support. It's not being given the support that is needed. Okay. All right. Um, I keep going back to my dual viewpoints, right? My experiences. Right. I happen to have gone back to Jamaica 2020 for whatever mm -hmm. personal reasons, right? And I did, I re-entered the system. I was a little naive. Um, I, a lot, I thought a lot had changed, but it was a case of the more things change, the more they remain the same. I went to a system that was, that's anemic. Mm -hmm. A system that's bleeding resources. Mm -hmm. I went into a school where when I left, it's the same school I left in Jamaica. And when I went back, a lot of the progress that I know was made had been eroded, probably because of the pandemic, right? I went back to a system that is lacking vision. I went back to a system where education is not, there is not, not enough financial resources are being pumped in. The, um, it's bleeding people of talent. Uh, we all know what was happening there. We're having a brain drain. Mm. It, I went back to a system where students don't see education the way we it, um, students used to view education. I had a bit of a culture shock when I met my students online. And you know the usual startup conversation you know, to um, introduce yourself, tell me what you like, what are your, you know, your hopes and your dreams and your aspirations. And quite a few of the students told me that they wanted to be YouTubers and TikTokers. And I said, what that? <laughs> it's about yeah, the you know, that that is not a, that's not a job. Yeah. What do you mean? But that's a reflection. No, but I'm done. telling you that that's a reality that I didn't know. I have since come to understand. What is that really? But I'm saying to you that these are students of 11 years old mm. who did not place any value on education. Remember, oh. you know, and then remember the background that we're coming out of a yeah. pandemic background. Those children had were losing or had been losing some time um, due to not being in the classroom space. But they no longer, we wanted to be teachers. From picking a little uh, bit of Jamaica, yeah, but, you want when you have six year old and so they want to be yeah, teacher, to lawyer, policeman, man, yeah. and nurse. Yeah. Them picking they want to be tick. Mr. So what is a TikToker? And, so and they had to educate like, me. <laughs> <laughs> but hold right? on, John. On a serious note. Hold on, hold on. On a serious note. And but me, I was shocked and very disappointed and very hurt. Part, <laughs> part of part of what it is saying though is maybe our expectation of the system needs to be reset. Javon, you're, you're, you're talking in, to in, 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 a, in, a, in a small sense, yes. Uh, expectations uh, needing to be reset, yes. It, we're 
career and new and emerging careers are are, mm -hmm. are concerned. Um, this whole idea of social media influencers, social media marketing, it, it may not be um novel but it is certainly new for for this kind of dispensation and for those um of our forefathers who weren't you know familiar with this it it, it seems kind of odd but the mm -hmm. fact is that there are new and emerging careers which are being put forward to our students and this is what our our students are aspiring to outside of that the the, the fact is i agree with joy the system is still in a backward state all right hold on i have two other things on this line what are the good parts of the system today <laughs> the good parts of the system hmm. all right <laughs> that is, is that, is that even for me? <laughs> I, I, I have i, I, I literally have yeah, to choke, choke uh, on that one <laughs> i literally have to you know take a, a second to think all right so i can see that there are efforts from a national perspective to improve the way in which uh certain processes are carried out within the school outside mm -hmm. of that um, i see the implementation of uh, different programs to assist our students to become their best selves to become mm -hmm economically and educationally adept right and i speak to the sixth form program that, that that's one thing uh or should i say the sixth form pathways program that's that, that's one of the programs which I, I i think um is useful even though i have a challenge with uh how it is being communicated and how it is being implemented mm -hmm. the whole idea of allowing students to you know study subjects or or pursue careers according to what it is that they are capable of or what it is that they are able to do and what it is that they can manage i, I think is it, it, it's a good thing because it makes no sense to me that you you force a child to become a doctor or a lawyer or a teacher and um, when he or she really wants to be a TikToker. A, a TikToker. <laughs> <laughs> or an, uh, I don't I don't like how you are trivialized. Or, or, or an each there are social media but marketer. Not, or, 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 or one of I'm those. not trivializing it though. We but have to on. I think we have a duty of care towards our children, which we must exercise, right? I think um immature minds, eleven year olds we have to guide them we it's our duty mm -hmm. and what is important is for us to point out to these children that some of these careers if you can call it a career they're not sustainable it's just like your child says i want to be a basketball player right i want to be a football player you have to uh, make sure they understand that there are pitfalls within these careers so you need to have a contingency plan I agree. what but if you applies, become not apply to everything though joy no it's no no apply, let me let apply, me finish that's that's the point i'm making so you have to not everybody going to succeed as a tiktoker some of them or, some or of them don't have no creative ideas whatsoever they are all just regurgitating what the other person is doing I eventually they're going to fade from the scene and then what you got to chop the line is and, that and your contingency? Shoppers, that, that's also something that people are aspiring to. Dunce check and all of those things are bouncing. And Dunceness oh. is now being elevated as something to be glorified. What kind of society are we producing? All right, hold on, hold on. Because I, I, I like where this is going. So what is the role of the community and the home to deliver the outcomes the education system should? So the community has a role to guide, to direct, and to ensure that the students engage in activities which can help them to contribute to society. That is the, the, the ultimate aim or That's the ultimate goal. 
But what first we have to define different? but first we have to define community. Who makes up the community? Okay, Joy, when you grew up in Waterhouse and the community around you, did, did it see and support education as the path for 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 you? Of course. But remember, now, me did I go St. Hughes in the summer was a big deal, right? <laughs> and everybody did lift me up and embrace me. D but does, that, does that happen today? I don't think that's the kind of society we have now. Okay. It, it's fading. You know, I it, saw this, it, I saw this video recently of a woman who um, was referred to as a gran grandmother or granny. And somebody had interviewed her in one of the more... Um, well-known um song about if there's such a word um garris the communities right and that woman was extolling the value of violence uh, or anybody come and this way where we are gonna do that's not what we did when i was growing up in what else so the value system has shifted mm -hmm. so, so, so the, the community is not in my opinion and, and I'm generalizing because yeah, yeah. that's not true of everybody and everywhere. Mm -hmm. But they're not lifting up and celebrating education the way it used to be. So, and so, that is one of the things that that's one of the, the points where we have a problem. Okay. Because is who, it, is, is, who is encouraging these students to embrace education? And also, I'm sorry, Javon, I have to go back to what Javon said, right? Because that's something I've been touting for years our education system has been singularly focused on the 10 percent of bright children and it is probably 10 percent and um the belly of the children you know the bell curve mm -hmm. the belly is where the bulk of the students fall and they're average students and nobody pays attention it's not even 10 percent down at the bottom it's probably a 40 percent by now who can't even are not even neither literate nor numerate mm -hmm. just go on youtube and you see how illiterate or well not very well educated we are so, so, some other products of the system yeah uh, yeah the system is failing yeah but i think it's a little bit broader javon uh how does crime and some of the other social issues you know joy talked about uh, poverty and hunger, how, how is that playing itself out on, on the system? Uh, certainly it is have been, ha having a crippling effect on our education system. Uh, the effects are varied so much so that sometimes persons are not able to go to school. Uh, when persons mm -hmm. lose lo loved ones, they, they're hurt and they ache for days, so it affects their emotional stability, right? Uh, it, it, it overall creates a sense of fear and trepidation within the, the community and the society. And if persons are not strong and if they don't get the necessary help that they need, then it prevents them from learning or prevents them from having the motivation to want to continue to aspire and achieve academically. Yeah. Is it, is uh, let me, um, let, can I just add to that? Um, yeah. Just to bring in the American system for a quick minute. Mm -hmm. I I've been working in early childhood for many years. In early childhood, um, in New York, there is this, the way the system is set up. If the teacher perceives a child to have any kind of um, disability, and, and we're using disability very broadly, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They when when children enter the system and in a in a high quality early childhood um, center, within thirty days you're supposed to do an assessment of that child, a kind of screening, and if the numbers when the data is called right, if any red flags come up, then a recommendation is made for this child to get an assessment done, a formal assessment. This has to be sanctioned by the parents. And if if the parent says, go ahead, because, okay, I agree that there are, this, these are, there are these concerns, whether it's speech, whether it's physical development, whether it's um, social development in, in any areas lacking in any other domains, then an assessment is done. And pretty soon, 
a provider, you, you, the parent gets a chance to select a provider to come in and give this child um, therapy, right? Mm -hmm. This is something that is in place from as, late, as early as infancy. Where, is, where are these supports? There, there's no scaffolding in our system. And I understand that we don't have the resources. Right. But what I think we need to do is kind of reorganize and shift our priorities. All right. Why so, the politicians not take a pay cut? And I mean, I might be saying something <laughs> that everybody else is saying. I, and, and, and I'm not even um, being facetious when I say this. We are not giving education the priority that it needs. And now the chicken is coming home to roost. Yeah, right. This is so why the chopper day... Well, and, we go back and to the chicken and the egg. Yeah. Because we, we well, get back to the same question of do we build roads, do we build bridges, do we uh, create uh, roads and jobs and all kinds of other things? Where, where does the trade off? So hold on, the, 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 the clock is ticking and I only have a couple more questions. So I'm going to put both of you on the spot now in terms of government. Where should the primary focus be? In, in the education system to move it to the next level. And you can't say everything, so you have to pick one. Where, where, has, where, where should the primary focus be to, to get our education system to deliver the outcomes that we need? Only one? Yeah, you get to pick one. Hmm. Um, I would say if I were to choose one area the focus needs to be, is a comprehensive development of ICT um, in the Jamaican education system. Uh, the, the government has attempted to um, include this at various levels of the different well, Jevon, educational what is levels. ICT though? Uh, yes, I, I'm coming to that. <laughs> but we, we we see where the uh, the government is using the internet to refer to ICT. And by ICT, the, it, it's an acronym which stands for Information Communications Technology. And it, it is much more than providing broadband internet within schools. Um, mm -hmm. Several schools have um, accessed that through a government program. Not all schools are benefiting from that. But I, I say that the government should go one step further and ensure that things such as a, a, a smart board, things such as uh, the, the, the necessary software that, that is available to help students learn and understand is available right across the system so that students are not only dependent on physical text or dependent on um, learning through a teacher, but they too can use the resources, hard or soft, that is available to guide their own learning. All right. So technology, Joy, your My government. Your, your government. But you know what? <laughs> well, me to you. <laughs> you know what comes to my mind? A Jamaican cliche where say, yeah, watch a cock and the bunga leak, right? <laughs> <laughs> or um, <laughs> because here, I think what a lot of us are not focusing on prior to 2019, if you, if you asked me that question, I probably would have said, maybe something similar, or put more resources into education, put more smart boards into the classroom, et cetera, et cetera. But now I think what we need to focus on is what we have in front of us now, 2023, April. We have children who are traumatized. They are not ready to learn because there are huge learning gaps. And nothing has been done or very little has been done to address the trauma that these children take with them into the classroom. Hence, all of the behavioral problems. Children are five children, children are five teacher, teacher are five children. And it's just a lot of antisocial behaviors. We're not, we're not having classrooms, we're having zoos. And until we address the elephant in the room, there is absolutely no learning that's going to take place. We, the children lost two years of learning and the exam structure has not changed. To my mind, that's not making any sense. 
we have to go and address the social emotional issues before we can move forward. And all of the technology and the ICT and the all kind of teas that Javan is going to put there. You know what my students did in 2020, 2021, and 2022? Well, I think by 2022, they realized exam are come and they don't know nothing. Mm -hmm. Them never, they, they, they logged on if they chose to lo log on mm -hmm. for the classes and they promptly just disappeared mm -hmm. or they had the classroom on one tab or one screen. Javon, um, please correct me with the technological terminology. I'm very, you know, intellectually cha um, technologically, technologically challenged. And then they went on to play their games. So give you can give them all the fancy tablets and, well, and, and you, software you and apps that you want to no, give them. If they're not interested, they're gonna go about their business and go create them TikTok platform and whatever. But you'd agree that addressing those uh, socio-emotional issues is a process, and that is something that will take time. And but if the process is not started, right, then we we are not. Uh, what is the way forward? We're not gonna make any progress, though. So listen, right, this this enough. this could go on for forever. Uh, this has been an absolute great conversation and great perspective from from practitioners. Uh, what I'm gonna take away from it is both sides. We need technology, because we need to, to get them current, but we also need to, to, to work on social and emotional issues to ensure that the environment that they uh, are in and come into helps them to develop as individual, as people, so that they can be productive. Joy, Javon, this has been an awesome discussion here on Watago, and I appreciate you both taking the time to, to, to share your perspectives with us. Uh, and I, I know you will continue to contribute to the system in some way. Absolutely. And I'm, or, I'm starting yeah. where it all begins, right, Javon, right in early childhood. So they get to <laughs> you, they're right. going to be perfect human beings. And so when they get to my stage, I have less trouble. You won't have any problem. You <laughs> have all the technology that's available. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, anyway, guys, take care. Thanks a lot. It no was problem. my pleasure. It was a right, pleasure indeed. <laughs>
And it was absolutely amazing to me how that sector was creating opportunities, creating industries. Uh, and in recent time, there are people who have actually left the traditional uh, yeah. jobs, the nine to fives, mm -hmm. to become content creators. And, so, and even if you look at Jamaica, like there are so many of them now that that's their career. They've become. Yeah. Granted, some of them, some of them have a laugh because you know the, the influence and them are five follower. But I'm like oh. seriously, no. <laughs> no, no, no. you're like you possibly need to get a little bit more influence. Yeah, really <laughs> more influence. yeah but it, 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 but it, we'll, it. We'll have to bridge the gap. But you know what? It's it's what it is. Good reasoning. Good reasoning. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we we appreciate the fact that there's work to do. Yeah. Uh, all right, I'm gonna leave it to you. We've gone long. Make it do your thing. All right, cool. All right, next week. Yeah, my next week. All right. I hope you folks were well tuned in and enjoyed the conversation. It was a very good conversation. And I would just like to point out that it is going to take a collective effort from everybody to, to, to get Jamaica to where we want it to be. We can't have a hands off approach. I know a lot of us, not me, throw stone back away, but for those of us who haven't and still consider Jamaica our home and want to see it shine like the, the gem that it is, this is going to take a concerted um, effort to, um, you know, to, to build the education system because it all starts with education. Even if it, everybody can have a degree, but even if it's being able to be literate and numerate, those things are, are very important. So... You know, I hope you folks were listening and taking points from from the conversation. Um, I'm not sure. Did anyone comment on? Uh, hey, hey, Michelle, how are you? And are your bedtime yet? Yes, generational gap. Yeah, as it relates to, I'm guessing teachers now and are the two teachers. Yeah, but there is a lot of generational gap that is happening and we have to look at things these days as success to me, who is from old school, is different from my daughter and my son who is who was born in the 2000s. Their um, look on, on success is, is very different. So, yeah. But then, so again, people, you know, you know I broke my heart, man. You know, half it... You know, have to drop things in the comment. Nobody, uh, them good word, their name, good phrase. Uh, you know, should I light up the comment? When last in the year, do. Especially for me, overseas peeps. When are the last time when, when you hear somebody said do? So start light up the comments, man, with the, what is happening. But do, so the word do in English, it would be please, right? So it means pleading or begging someone for help. Or if you do you like a favor, but I was just thinking on it, and do can also mean something. So, you know, somebody say, No, do that, man, which is not necessarily begging or pleading. So, do the parts of speech, it can be a verb and it, <clears throat> it can be an adverb. So, depending on how you use it in the sentence, it, 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 it applies to two different parts of speech. I will say, part one language, see there. We have put it all in a part of speech, right? So, again, keep the thing lively. Make the thing interactive by commenting because may I go down in the books to find the old patwa word, man. So, I have to reward the thing by keeping it lively. But we want to promote next week's show. And next week, we're going to be looking at the Wind Rush 75. A generation of stories and we're going to be talking about we're going to be sorry talking to tony fairweather and he's an author for author of 28 pounds 10 shillings this i want to go way back from me boy 28 pounds shilling when i know them the money day so tony fairweather has some experience about those who sailed on the hmt Empire Windrush many years ago. So join us. That should be another wonderful um, conversation to hear all, you know, people who traveled to London, you know, in that era, how they've contributed and, you know, to make this England build it, you know, and make it what it is today. So join in, tell your friend. And when you come, make sure you're shouting out 
stuff in the comments. I can't stress that part enough. All right, so you can share your message on Wataguan National while we share our stories and experiences. You can do this by advertising with us as we continue to grow. Contact us via www.wataguan.ca or our social media handles, which is YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, or on our website. For promotions, you can connect with us through email at wataguancnd at gmail.com. <clears throat> Sorry, we'll see. Don't be a try to catch me in the last part. Check out our website at www.wataguancnd. Send us an email or contact us through our different social media platform and also remember to like subscribe follow and share share the thing like food again another week of what Aguani has come to an end and it's your girl from bongo town saying take care of yourself what good <laughs>